Welcome guys. Uh, this is the basic lab skills session which is delivered to BHCS 2002 for biomedical sciences and BHCS 2019 to methods in human biosciences. I'm at workstation 4 which is all about weighing. So before we start this would there are several important aspects to get across. First wearing of appropriate PPE. So your gloves, your lab coat, make sure that you are fully covered and that uh, you're safe for operating and weighing out something that might be potentially dangerous. Now before we start weighing, the first thing we need to do is never assume that the laboratory or the weighing balance has been left in a condition that is totally safe. So it is always best practice before you weigh something to first reach for your blue towel and from your blue towel to dampen under a tap and this slightly damp blue towel what we're going to do is wipe the area so that it removes any potential chemicals that might have been left over from the previous user. So I'm going to wipe the area and I'm going to very gently wipe the top surface of the balance. Please do not push down hard on the balance, it will upset it. So I'm going to very gently wipe across and the dampness of the towel will remove any contaminating chemicals. Okay, That can safely be disposed of into your waste bucket by the side. <clears throat> Now this allows us to start weighing. So it's all about selection of the weighing boat and selection of the spatula that you want to use. And that is dependent on the weight of the solid that you want to weigh out. So I'm going to give um, three examples. We're going to weigh out half a gram, one gram, and 10 grams of solid. So the selection of uh, spatula and weighing boat is most important. For half a gram, we will be using a small weighing boat and a small spatula which will be appropriate for weighing the solid out. For one gram we start to think the medium spatula with the medium weighing boat is appropriate. We put that down and then finally for weighing of 10 grams a much larger weight of solid we're going to use the bigger weighing boat with the bigger spatula. All right? It just makes your life a hell of a lot easier if you choose the appropriate equipment. So, we're now going to come on to the balance. We've wiped it, cleaned it. Now, this balance might be exactly as you see here, or it might be um, a balance that has got a tiny little um, flow hood round it, a perspex protection if you like. Now if you have one of those, you will have to think about how you organise yourself around the um, weighing um, instrument and you're going to be able to open the doors and you'll have to use right and left hands to um, take solid and to place it into the weighing boat. Okay, so I'm going to start off by weighing half a gram. The first thing we want to do is switch on the balance and the balance, hey, it's fairly simple, the on off switch. We press the on off switch, give it time and it comes to zero normally. Now, if it doesn't, and it, it can oscillate, if it doesn't go to zero, you need to tear it and uh, switch it to zero. So this is done by pressing the re-zero button, or in some balances it might actually be T for tear. So I'm going to put the weighing boat on, onto the centre. Now you can see it registers a weight. What you want to do is weigh the solid. So what we need to do now is tear so that um, with the weighing boat on, it registers zero. So I'm going to press the re-zero or tear button, and that sets at zero with the weighing boat on top of the balance. Please do not move that uh, weighing boat once you've um, teared to zero. Now I can weigh the solid. So I'm going over here, and I'm being very careful not to drop anything that might be in the lid because we don't want it splashed all over the area. 
and I'm going to weigh half a gram. And this um, is using the smaller spatula. So the ideal is to get the solid as close to the um, weighing boat as possible so that uh, it minimalizes potential spill of the solid. I'm going to reach in past the lumps that is and I'm going to keep on doing this now. This is uh, quite fine stuff and what you can see is the balance is starting to register the weight that I have put in. Now obviously for this, I think for this operation, this spatula um, turns out it's a little bit too small. So actually I've selected the wrong one, but I'm changing the selection by going to the medium one and it'll make the job go a lot quicker. So now I can slowly go in. Now, I have gone way over. So I've been too heavy handed. Now because that's zeroed, I can, so long as I don't upset the balance, I can gently pick this off and decant into there and then put back on. Now you can see here, I've been, I've gone the other way. This is going to be great, isn't it? <laughs> this video is going to take tend a long time. So a small amount, very gently adding it on. It goes to 385, so I'm getting there. And I'm going to continue to very gently do that. Right, okay, so that is half a gram weight. As you can see, it went slightly over, but the closer to 0 0.500 you can get it the best. Now, effectively, before I do anything else, I'm going to put the lid on the solid. And what we want to do is get the solid into a tube. Now, the tube here, we're going to decant. Some solids can fly all over the place, so one of the best ways of handling this is to grab hold of the weighing boat and to fold it so that it's across the diagonal. It creates this sm a small channel in which I can just put into the tube and then flick it that way. Okay? All right, so that is your half a gram. Now, what we would then do is for one gram and 10 grams, we can uh, put the respective weighing boat on and we could use a big spatula. Now, you'll be happy I'm going to zero first, but you'll be happy I'm not going to go through the whole process, but we use the bigger spatula and you can see that it's, um, it's going to be measured fairly quickly by the sheer volume. So I would do that until it registers 10 grams and then I would decant in here. So folding it across the diagonal again and then pouring it safely in there. Okay, now it's almost as though I planned it. But effectively, your lecturer has made a real, a real mess of the area, okay? Um, thank you for the photographer for showing that. But effectively, this is why you need uh, the damp cloth both before and afterwards. So to leave the balance in a safe um, situation for the next user, we wipe the areas around. We wipe the spatula and then of course we gently wipe the top and this shall remove the solid that was spilt and then the tissue can be safely disposed of in the disposal bag. The final bit is to switch off, to dispose of any weighing boats that you used, make sure your lid is on of the receptacle that took the solid, we don't want that spilt, and to leave the working area exactly how you'd like to find it, including switching off the balance. Thank you guys, I'll see you later. Hello guys, um, we're here now just to run through a really basic session about how to correctly pipette the varieties of pipettes that you have 
and how you can start to use them effectively without ruining equipment and therefore your experiment. So if we have a look down over here, I have a variety of pipettes on display with their associated tips. A thing to notice first of all is, despite having a similar shell, they have different capabilities. So if you look at the end of the nozzle here, here and here, you will notice that they are of different diameters. And this reflects the different volumes that the pipettes are capable of accommodating. Working out exactly what these volumes are is, of course, a pain. But fortunately, each pipette comes with a description of how much its capacity is. And a golden rule of this is you do not exceed this capacity, either excessive or too little. It's meaningless for you and possibly ruins the pipette. So this one, for instance, you can see at the top here, Proline is a manufacturer, but its range is 100 microliters to 1,000 microliters. By contrast, this smaller one is a 20 to 200 microliters. And there are all sorts of varieties of pipettes suitable to the task that you need to do. So make sure that you select your pipette appropriate to the volume you need. Now, to give you an indication of these kinds of uh, pipettes, the smallest one has a dedicated pipette. For instance, if I take this pipette tip for this pipette, it simply will not fit, and therefore you can't use an incorrect pipette tip. These yellow ones are often the ones that will be suitable for the smaller scale pipettes. So what you can do is you take your pipette, firm grasp, either left or right-handed, it doesn't matter, and there's a little hook just here. That hook sits on your hand, so the pipette will hang there quite happily, and you can curl your hand around the pipette thus. You can adjust the volume that you require to pipette by simply turning this little knob at the end. It will make a very friendly clicking sound to help you work out what, you, uh, what volume you're choosing. Again, I reiterate, never exceed the maximum and the minimum volumes. So once you've got the appropriate volume, in this case 100 microliters, you take your pipette, nestle it comfortably in your hand, so typically just on the end of your finger here. Thumb ready on the top should you need it. You then place your pipette gently into the top, a little bit of pressure, just enough to make it stick. You don't need to force it through, that just tends to bend pipette tips. A little bit of pressure and lift clear. The pipette tip will stay on. If it's not on correctly, if you give it a wiggle, it'll come off and the world is a happier place. So you've got your volume set, you've got your pipette tip ready. Now comes the functionality of the pipette. It's a very nice, simple piece of kit. When you use your thumb and you depress down, that essentially squirts liquid out, but it can also be used to create a vacuum. You will feel when you depress down, there are two points. There's a point over here, which is the first point, and you think, yay, I've reached the end. But you can go a little bit further. You push just a fraction. There's a second biting point. So that is point one, point two. And these become important when it comes to doing good pipetting. Now I'll give you a practical example. Here's one I made earlier. A solution of purple fun. When you're doing good pipetting, you insert your pipette tip just a little bit vertically. You push down the plunger until you've got pipette point one. Then you gently bring it up. If you go too fast, you run the risk of not getting the correct volume. So keep it nice and gentle in a smooth motion. You can then take it out, making sure you just give a gentle wipe on the side. That makes sure you clear any residual stuff at the end of the tip. And there you have 100 microliters of funky purple stuff. When you want to decant this particular solution, you have your volume. Instead of going in vertically, come in at a slight angle. Then you go back finger on the plunger, you push through to point one. Now note, you're not fully empty at the very tip. That's where point two comes in. Give it a firm squeeze and that gets rid of any residual fluid. Once you've done that, you can remove the pipette tip directly into your waist with a little trigger on the side here. It's quite friendly. You can see it bouncing up and down. It doesn't do anything, but a good firm pop. That will release the pipette tip and you're ready for the next measurement. The end. 
And now we're on to the dilution phase. So dilution is a very, very simple, um, very useful technique, which is very, very easy to master. A good example of this is you've been at home, you've made orange squash or something like that. You're just doing this, the same thing there, making orange squash, but scientifically with lots and lots of toys. Now, when it comes to creating a dilution, you often need to balance the volume you require versus a concentration available and juggle those around to get the desired outcome. So if you look right here, this magical formula is going to be your friend for the rest of your life. C1V1 equals C2V2. The first concentration of your stock solution at a defined volume is equal to your uh, diluted concentration, C2, at a set volume, V2. Now, if you recall earlier, we were looking at how you do pipetting and the correct technique. This comes into play at this point now. Here is my fabulous, neat stock solution. This is too concentrated for the kind of work that I want to do, so I need to start diluting things out. To do that, I will prepare, one I've done earlier, a 1 in 10 dilution. So in this, pipette, in this little um, tube I've got here, I have placed a volume of water. And then what I will do is set a pipette for the appropriate volume of stock solution I required to create the correct concentration and volume of my desired solution. So I'm making a 5 milliliter volume of a 1 in 10 dilution, which means I need 50, sorry, 50, 500 microliters to make a 1 in 10. So, as with previous techniques, my pipette is set, the correct technique, I insert it, hoover up some liquid nice and gentle, make sure it's clear, make sure you put lids back on where necessary, take up again, and you pop it into your solution. If you want to give a bit of a mix, you can use your pipette by just simply gently bouncing it up and down to mix it well. Bom, bom, bom. Done. Once you've done that, lid on, eject the waste, and you have now a comparison. The neat versus the first dilution. But this is still too strong. So I might want to take this down an order of magnitude. And what I've done is I've pre-created a 1 in 100 dilution. So there's the 1 in 10, there's the 1 in 100 solution. And as you can see, you're starting to get a very marked colour difference here, which is always a good sign your dilution is working well. If I want to, say, make a 1 in 200 dilution, well, I have my 1 in 100. I just need half the amount. So I can take my pipette, take up half the solution, add it to the same volume of water, and lo and behold, you have a 1 in 200 dilution. Compare that to your initial one. And that is how you do a dilution. Next up, we'll be using these dilutions to look at spectrophotometry. Welcome back, guys. In the previous workstation, you had Paul showing you how to make dilutions. And he made up these dilutions of varying blue colours. Now, what we want to do is we want to detect the intensity of these blue colours. And the way that we're able to quantify the intensity of the blue colour is to use a spectrophotometer. This is the spectrophotometer that you are going to be using and you have come across it in many practicals uh, previously. Along with the um, spectrophotometer, you will have the instructions to switch it on. Please read them carefully as part of the assessment. Okay? But what we need to do is first of all give the instrument time to switch on. So we go to a rocker switch which is placed at the back and we flick that Okay, we get a click and the spec will start to register that it's setting up. Now, here we need patience. It'll take some time for it to set up. Do not press any buttons. 
okay? It takes a few minutes. If you're lucky, this will already be switched on for you. But what you can hear now is a clicking noise to the spec. And this is the spec setting itself up. The display, hopefully, will change in a minute. Okay, now, what we've got to do is now set up the spectrophotometer. And you are just going to read an endpoint density of colour. So all we need to do is switch it to the appropriate uh, wavelength to measure the colour, the blue intensity. So what we do is we want to select the, photom uh, the photometrics mode. And this is this square in the bottom left hand corner of the display. So what you need to do now is press the button aligned to the bottom left and that is this button. We're going to press that button now once. Just be patient. All right. It's changed the display now to register absorbance and an indication of the wavelength at which the colour is read. Now we want you to read at a defined wavelength. For the instance in blue, will be reading at 590 nanometers. Please check your wavelength that you have to set for this practical. It might be different. But whatever the wavelength, we're going to set now. So 590 is higher than 400. So we go to the right-hand side where these arrows are, and we're going to switch up the upwards arrow until we get 590 nanometers. So select that. You can see that we're scanning along scrolling up and we can keep pressing the button singly now when we're close to five nanometers that is set but what you can notice is that there's a tube here that indicates a cuvette saying zero that is an indicator that we have to zero the spectrophotometer so we're now going to uh, set the spectrophotometer by zeroing it ready so that we can measure the blue coloured solutions that were covered in the dilutions part of this lab skills assessment. Okay, Now, we are provided with cuvettes and in the cuvettes you'll find some cuvettes, some nice plastic cuvettes of one centimetre path length. So it's one centimetre from wall to wall. Now, for these big cuvettes, the bigger volume, it is appropriate to set your um, pipette at three and a half mils. If you get different pipettes, the lower volume of pipette, set it to one mil. But for these, the one centimeter squared, three and a half mils is appropriate. Now, what we do is we're going to take the, um, the zero solution, in this case, water, but you could have a different buffer, so be careful. But your zero solution, take three and a half um, mils of it, and you're going to put it in the pipette, uh, in the cuvette. Now, like good old Blue Peter, here's one I prepared earlier. Okay, so that's the three and a half mils of your zeroing solution. I'm going to put it into the um, spectrophotometer. At this stage, please note, the working parts of the spectrophotometer are in, in the lid, so be very careful with how you manipulate the lid. Please, no slamming open or slamming closed, because that will um, influence the readings that you get. So gently open the spectrophotometer. Now I'm going to put this cuvette into the spectrophotometer, but it's important to indicate how um, I put it in. Now, what we must point out is when we look inside the spectrophotometer, the light that shines on the cuvette comes out from the side. It's incidental to the cuvette and it goes straight ahead. So it shines through the cuvette holder here and will be collected at this side. So we need to make sure that the one centimeter path length, if you've got a different cuvette, is um, parallel with this light track. So we put the cuvette in gently, make sure it's fully down. And then we can now zero the machine. So gently put down the lid. And as you can see from the display on the front, we've still got that zero cuvette. Now select that. So we press that. Uh, 
and that has now zeroed. So we've zeroed on the buffer, buffering solution. It comes up as an absorbance of uh, zero. There's zero blue color in there. So now what we're going to do is measure the blue color. So gently open this up, take your zero cuvette out, and then you, to another cuvette, you've added three and a half mils of the test, the colored solution that you want to measure. So I'm going to gently put that in, put it in as you did the zero, make sure it's down properly, and then very gently close the lid again. Now what you can see is after the zero, this extra tube comes up. This is effectively the test. This is what you want to read and quantify. So opposite this tube, there is a button. Press that button once, lightly, and this will read. So in a minute, there we go. We have 0.559, which is a spectrophotometric um, measurement of the blue color intensity. That is what you will take as one of your finishing points to this assessment. So at this point, uh, guys, good luck with the assessment, and I hope these videos have proved useful.